Hello and welcome back to the Reapers. So another educational video if you like, it's just me today and today we're going to be talking about using the F-15C in DCS for the optimal um, BVR tactics. I see a lot of misuse, or I think is uh, misuse uh, of pilots in the F-15 in BVR fighting, uh, BVR being beyond visual range, i.e. being beyond 10 miles from the target and so I hope to share with you uh, what I think at least is uh, the best method and um, well I didn't even really figure it this out, out myself this is what I was taught by uh, more experienced and better pilots uh, so we're going to have a series of engagements between myself and Fortinero, Fortinero being our premier BVR pilot and um, we're going to hopefully show uh, the F-15 technique in use. BVR combat is an extremely complicated thing. The tactics uh, have numerous variables so we're going to be taking the kind of um, the simplest option here and there's going to be a lot of stipulations so first of all we're assuming it's just a one-on-one -on -one fight so it's just one you know uh, one blue guy one red guy no ground targets to worry about no other airplanes in the air I know this is very rare this video that's what we're going to assume um, next we're going to assume it's an angels 20 fight ie both fighters are at 20,000 feet um, again, it's unrealistic to have both fighters at exactly the same height in reality, but it just keeps things level. Um, if we were down low in the mud, uh, our tactics would be slightly different. If we were up higher, our tactics would be slightly different, but we'll just stick to Angels 20 because otherwise um, we'll just have too much to talk about, basically. Um, another assumption is that well, we are assuming both planes are modern, you know, BVR fighters, so both are, are kind of equal adversaries. If the hostile was uh, a much weaker aircraft, then you wouldn't have to employ these tactics, but so we're assuming both planes are uh, a major threat to each other. Uh, we are assuming that both aircraft have uh, a full, you know, tactical loadout of missiles. In reality, it's quite likely one might not have a full loadout, but we're assuming that both have a full loadout, or effectively a full useful loadout, and that both planes have sufficient fuel. Again, in reality, it's quite uh, quite likely one plane would have low fuel or uh, extra high fuel if you're a flanker or something. But we're a few, uh, uh, assuming both have got suitable fuel for the fight, and we're assuming that there's no terrain, so we've just got a flat ground, no mountains to hide behind, nothing to interfere with the radar, just keeping it super simple. Um, another thing to consider is that we're using BVR missiles, so you're talking AMRAMs, you're talking um, the flankers, Fox 1s, and um, and our 27ET missiles. The ranges of the missiles have been artificially lowered at high altitude in DCS simulator. It's a very accurate simulator, but they've been lowered. I can't remember how by how much, like 40% lower, I think, from from real life. Uh, depending on who you speak to, this is to force the combat to be slightly closer than it would be in reality. So one could argue maybe that these tactics that were shown today aren't relevant to real-life combat. Maybe that's true. I don't suppose we've got any way of finding out. But that's just one thing to bear in mind. Uh, okay, well, let's go on to the first fight. First, we're going to run it through just like uh, the full-screen video so you can see it. Then we're going to run it through... Um, on the on the tact on the tact view, the tactical view, so you can see all the figures, and numbers, and I'll talk through it. So stand by for that. I will lock, I will make a lock on you. Copy. I've locked you up and caps cranking left. I'm start to burn. Twenty seconds for max range. Ten seconds for max range. On range, firing fox. No. Cap launch warning, 20 miles. Full military now.
Cap 13 miles, turning in. Missile defeated. Cap 10 miles, Fox 3. Erratic movements for me. Fox is tracking. Hit. Roger. Ejecting. Okay, so now we're going to look at the tactical data from the first fight. So just to explain the data for you, so you've got the hostile here for Tenero, Cap is here in the blue. Um, this figure here is the altitude times 100 for feet, so that's 20,000 feet. That is the true speed there times 10 in knots, so that would be 420 knots true. Um, so you can see 20, Angel's 20 there and uh, 430 true knots there. Uh, this here is dis distance between aircraft, here is the aspect and here is the bearing. Um, down here, if for the nerdier people, we've got um, the full information for each fighter. Right, so let's get on with it, stand by. So the first things we did there was to drop bags, um, that's uh, incredibly important. The bags are there purely for uh, transit, uh, and as soon as you have the bags on, the fuel tanks, then the aircraft is no longer in uh, f fully fighting form. You can't pull the Gs that you need to do to dodge missiles and get yourself a firing solution. You can't go at full speed, or uh, there's so much drag on the plane. So the first thing you have to do before going on an engagement with the stipulations that we made earlier is that you have to drop uh, the fuel tanks or the bags. Um, if you didn't do that, you would be a serious deficit to your hostile. So if you ever see an F-15 charging into combat uh, against a adversary like an SU-27 or a MiG-29 or something or whatever, and he hasn't dropped his bags, then you know he doesn't know what he's doing because he's just taken 30% of his performance off straight away because he's kept his bags on so that's absolutely essential something you have to do in every fight yes it's annoying because you lose half of your fuel but that's just how it goes is uh, there's no way around it unfortunately the other thing you'll notice is that i went um or maybe you can't see it here but i went to full burn any engagement like this with the stipulations you have to be at full power basically because you have to get as much speed as you can it's a it's a one-on-one -on -one fight and whoever gets the most speed here you can see we're both matching each other perfectly at 530 knots uh true um whoever goes fastest can shoot their missile at longer range because they can put more missile energy into their missile shot you'll see a lot of people loitering around at military power or less going into combat uh, and you again you can see they don't know what they're doing because they're putting themselves at a huge deficit again another 30 or 40 percent deficit there in, in potential shot energy um, so that's just something that you have to do so every fighter, when they're designed, has compromises built into the design. Each fighter has pros and cons. The F-15 has pros and cons that the Su-27 does not have, and vice versa. The flanker has uh, pros and cons different to the F-15. Um, so to win a fight, you always have to maximise the pros of your aircraft. So the pros of the uh, F-15 are its outright acceleration at most altitudes, and its slow drag and speed. Um, so if you want to win with an F-15, you have to maximise that. So hence again, just reiterating the absolute necessity to be on full gate power to maximise the pro of your aircraft. So the flanker, although speed is obviously hugely important as well, um, but one of its pros is manoeuvrability, which the F-15 doesn't have. So, um, so what we'll see is the flanker uh, prioritising that at points where the F-15 won't. So we bat our bags off, we're full gate power, and let's see what we do next. Well, the next, um, we're going to do something that's just as important. We're doing it again. We're doing cranking this time. So we've locked the target up in TWS mode. That's um, track wall scan mode, or a silent lock, as I call it, because it does not radiate enough energy to alert the hostile that they are being locked. So hence, I call it a silent lock. It's very tactical, and you should always lock every single shot you do with uh, track wall scan. Never don't use it. Um, so what we're doing now is we're cranking. I've decided to crank to the left. It's approximately 40 degrees. I cover this more in earlier videos, but um, what you want to do is have the hostile positioned in the right qu or, or the far quartet of your radar, which is divided into four, and you want to keep him there. That will ensure the 40 degree crank, so you can still keep a lock on him. You're within your 40 degrees of uh, radar cone to the right. But you are—you um, have this crank angle. Well, 
why is it so important? It's because if you crank to the side like this, you drastically reduce the uh, hostile's firing range. Because if the hostile wanted to fire at me now, the missile couldn't go along this um, direct line here because if it would just fall behind me because I will be moving at this crank angle so the uh, if the hostile fires a missile at me it has to come at this kind of angle and curve around in front of me to meet me roughly about here um, why is that a good thing for me well if that missile comes here a you're increasing the overall distance between the firing point here and the impact point here I know it doesn't look like it on this um, on this setup here it looks like that's the long distance but in fact if you work it out uh, geometrically you are increasing the distance from here to here um, by doing the crank now that's, obviously that's great because it gives you maximum time to dodge the missile and it's more time the missile has to burn and the more uh, energy we can scrub off the missile which is all, what all uh, air combat is about uh, so as well as um, increasing the missiles uh, flight distance it also the missile will likely have to curve as well whenever a missile curves at any kind of uh, angle you scrub off loads of energy off the missile uh, which is exactly the same thing that exactly want to do it slows the missile down and makes it less effective so we've got our crank on um, when do you want to start cranking I say about 30 miles I don't think there's any right answer make sure it's above 20 miles though um, because um, at 20 miles the hostile is likely going to start firing fox ones or fox threes at you so let's carry on so we can see we've got that lovely 40 degree crank in there we're still gate um, we're maintaining altitude you don't have to do this in a, in a real fight bot but we're trying to keep everything at angels 20 for this example just to keep everything uh, in line you can see the um, we're both at full power. The F-15 is starting to come into its own here. You can see it's starting to accelerate. We're at 700 knots, while the Fank is uh, still only, well, it's only just reaching 700 knots now. So we've got uh, 20 knots on the flanker here, and that 20 knots could easily mean the difference between life or death. I've got 20 knots more kinetic energy in my shot, basically. Hence so why you have to do this. If you don't do this, then you've got no chance. Um, so we're at 20 miles from the hostile now. He's going to be in firing range very shortly, so we'll send that off. Hostile is fired. Now, look at that angle. Because we've cranked so far to the left, up to 40 degrees, look at the angle that missile is having to fire. It's having to come all the way out here, and it's going to have to curve. As it gets slower, it's going to have to start curving. It will get slower because it runs out of rocket fuel after 10 miles. It's going to have to start curving around into our crank path like that, and it's going to absolutely nail that missile's energy. And it's a really good missile, these, in terms of range, these um, R27 ERs. And it's prudent to point out at this point that you've got the hostile missile coming towards you and your aeroplane is giving you all kinds of warnings about that and telling you to get the hell out of there. Um, we uh, And uh, obviously when you've got a missile being fired at you, that's what you want to do. All of your sensors are telling you, uh, okay, let's, let's start dodging, let's um, turn around, run away from it, let's start chaffing. You know. But with this technique that I'm showing you, you must not do that. You must trust in the technique and that it works, and it does. So you have to fight through your sense, uh, your, um, you know, your desire to run away or to dodge that thing, and um, and carry on, and you will see the fruits of it. So here comes the missile on its um, hugely inefficient path. It's starting to curve to the left, and look at its speed. It's at speed there, uh, the EOL speed, and it's. it's, it's so we're scrubbing that speed off hugely because you see it's having to curve. It's run out of rocket fuel now. So that missile, although it's still coming towards us and it's still a threat and it's still pinging our aircraft, is effectively beaten. It's, we've scrubbed so much of its energy off here with the crank that it's no longer effective. Uh, so the next thing is we have reached our nominal distance of 13 miles uh, at Angels 20, what this fight is at. If you've done everything that I've told you to do, then your your distance to turn in will be 13 miles so, or 13 to 14 so the next thing we're going to do is a hard bank to the right and a hard 9g pull to the right to get ourselves a firing solution on the hostile um, is there anything else to point out there so that's the distance um, another good thing to see here is that the um, hostile has reduced their velocity 
Um, that's a mistake really and um, we've kept our velocity we're still on gate power so we've still got a velocity advantage at the moment it's just something to point out so let's see the crank right get in and there it is hard right and we want the idea is that our vector our travel vector our uh, sorry, our, our, our nose vector, which is the blue line here, wants to be on the target or close to it at 10 miles. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit of choreography. You've got to get it right. These distances are non-negotiable at these altitudes. These are pre-calculated, um, so you just stick to them. You never add any miles to them or take any miles away. As long as you've done everything as explained, you always stick to these, and these will always work and always allow you to dodge incoming missiles and hit with your missiles. So the nose is on. I've gone a bit too far as you can see but you know it's, it's close enough. Um, the next bit is negotiable. I like to fire with my aircraft upside down um, because it gives me a quicker escape vector. Um, it's You don't have to do that. It might be difficult for some people. It's just something I've learned to do. So I'm flipping my uh, bird upside down. You can see I'm really rusty in F-15 at the moment. I haven't flown it in weeks probably so you can see that my angle is down below the target that's a mistake it's because I should have been aiming above the target slightly um, but um, just ignore that for now there's my Fox 3 you see it's compensated for my error it's heading upwards but that should still hit fine um, this R27 look what it's had to do to catch up to compensate for my crank and my turn is shot turning. It's got absolutely no chance of hitting me. It's down at 560 knots, so it's going uh, much slower than my aircraft at the moment and has no hope. Uh, meanwhile, the hostile is up here at 8 miles away. Now, as soon as I fired that shot, I go cold. Um, uh, some things to point out here. So, um, I fired at 10 miles exactly, and it has to be 10 miles after you're pointing at the target. I fire one missile, and I only ever fire wind missiles. That's one missile per engagement. Anything else is a tactical blunder and a waste. You notice, you can always tell a, a, a newbie uh, F-15 driver when he starts firing missiles at 20 miles away. It's completely useless. There's no point of it at all. The flanker often will fire at max range 20 miles away or so. Um, that's because the flanker is a Fox 1 base aircraft. It has completely different tactics to win to the F-15. You cannot compare them in any way their tactics. So um, this guy to, to, to keep me on the back foot and keep me negatively postured, that's why he fired his missile straight away at 20 miles away. I don't have to do that. In an F-15 you don't have to posture. It's more about silence and accurate shooting um, and being conservative. Um, and so that's why we fire one missile at, at an exact kill range. There's nothing else. We don't have to do any flirting around with posturing or trying to scare the target. That's the opposite of what we're trying to do in the 15. Anyway, uh, so as soon as that missile's away, I don't want to stick around. I don't want to re-engage. All I want to do is get safe now. That's the thing to do. And again, it's non-negotiable. It's something you have to do. So I've orientated it myself in a vertical, uh, in an inverted position, which leads me directly to the Spit S maneuver. This is Spit S maneuver is the fastest way of getting out of combat. So you're traveling along here. You invert. You are full power. And you just pull back on the stick and reverse all the way down like this. That's the quickest uh, way to maintain speed and get away from a target. So let's see that go. Um, you'll see my G rate get considerably high, whereas my G rate, as uh, you see, we're at 7.8 G here, so we're, we're, we're starting to pass out. It's beyond what a human can um, accept. So you've got to balance speed, uh, stick pull, and G at this point, so you don't uh, so you don't black out. Meanwhile, our AMRAM is doing pretty good. It's doing exactly what we told it to do. Um, we fired it at the pre-designated um, distance of 10 miles, which is optimum firing distance at this height. Um, and around about this point here is when it went pitbull and actually started um, uh, tracking the target itself. And only at that point did Fort Nero, when the missile was here, get any kind of idea that the missile was being, um, that the missile was spiking him. Um, which is why he was late manoeuvring and it's going to be very difficult for him now to beat this high energy M120. Look at the speed, it's 2.2 uh, 2 thousand knots. Almost impossible to dodge because it's got so much so much energy at that point. And what we'll see here, oh, um, uh, one thing to note, during my uh, descent into the Spit S, I'm also chaffing. I know he's fired radar missiles, 
uh, I know we can see it here, but in reality, I don't have no idea where it is. So I am just blasting the chaff away along all the way along the split S to make sure, just to give us an extra hand in case there's rogue missiles out there. Uh, so the AIM-120 is going to plop in his aircraft. Uh, he was under orders not to, to dodge the AIM-120. Um, he can dodge them, but I've told him not to because obviously for this example, most average pilots you fight uh, in public servers or AI pilots will just run straight into it like that because it is a genuinely extremely difficult thing to dodge when they're fired with such high energy so that's target down going to come to the end of my speed S I want to level out at about um, Angels 10 uh, I've gone too low here, I've gone right down to Angels 5 which has become a bit rusty but um, that'll do and you can see my speed is massive um, if this fight had continued, which would be quite likely um, if he had dodged the missile or a fault with the missile or whatever, you see I've got all the way back up to 760 knots um, in a reverse position, which is really impressive. This is where the F-15, what, what it was designed to do, it was designed to do this extremely quickly, retain its energy, hence its low drag, and uh, boom and zoom uh, away from the target. So I can uh, get out of here now at that speed, which mm, almost nothing in the world can keep up with, which is why it's such a good plane. Okay, I think I've covered um, most of the stuff from the first engagement, so what we'll do now is move to a second engagement. Um, it's exactly the same scenario, except this time Fortinero has permission to fight back um, at his full ability, so it's going to make things a little more difficult. Stand by. Gate 10. Bags off. Mm -hmm. uh, nose warm. Track while scan, target locked, cranking right. Out spike, 11 o'clock and 20 miles. Fourteen miles turning in. Cap Fox three and evasive. Hey! Yeah! Ha! <laughs> 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 okay. Okay, we're into the second fight. Just ignore this missile here, it's just from the previous fight. Um, so you see we're doing exactly the same. We're 40 miles away, Angels 20, hot on each other. Cap's dumped his tank, some on full burn. All the things we went through earlier, all the essentials. I will get a lock on the target. I'm going to try and get a more balanced view here on this one. Uh, I've got a lock on the target. I'm doing my crank and cranking to the right. Does it matter which way you crank? No, it doesn't. You can crank to the left or to the right, it's irrelevant, but it will usually be t determined by tactical decisions. In reality, there's likely to be SAM sites or other fighters, so you'll want to crank away from the extra hostiles. Okay, uh, now, interestingly, we've got Fortinero's. Also, he's set to max skill level now, uh, so he is also cranking 40 degrees to the right. So we're going to get this weird effect where I'm cranking to the right, he's cranking to the right. Neither of us can fire at each other. Uh, we're both completely invulnerable from each other at the moment, basically. Um, which often happens if you get two guys cranking um, away from each other. So let's follow it up. So Fortinero has decided he doesn't like the crank anymore. He's decided to turn in for a shot. We're at just under 20 miles. He's going to spike me. I'm just making small adjustments to keep the crank right, keep him in my in the left quarter of my radar. We're now at 15 miles. Try and get a shot at that. There we go. I'm turning in. I want to get that beam on him at 10 miles and fire the shot 10 miles. There's a fox out from Fortinero. So he's fired. He didn't do his early shot. He did a late shot this time. Uh, I did my I did my 10 mile shot. Um, I was ever slightly early. You see, we're 9.7 miles. I must have fired about 10 and a half miles, but. 
yeah, the closer you can get to 10 miles, the better, because it's a predetermined number. Um, you know, you can see Fortinero has done a, uh, a masterful move here. I hate it when they do this. He's fired his radar missile, ER, extra range missile, um, which is what I can hear in my radar warning receiver, and I, what I think is up. He's also fired a killer missile, uh, an ET, that's a that's a infrared guided missile, directly behind it. So I know about this, and I'll try and dodge this, I don't know about this, this is a complete passive missile, um, so it's a real cheeky move that he's done there, but it's a good move, it's, and it's how you win fights. So, let's see how it goes through now, I fired my missile, I'm now doing my split S with my chaff, I'm not flaring because I didn't realise about this missile, but never mind. Fortinero is now dodging, he's got the warning, uh, the AIM-120 is starting to scrub speed off, because you see he's dodging it, so at this point, dodging an AIM-120 or a Russian missile is all about energy, putting the most energy into your plane that you can, changing direction as quick as you can. Um, and both the F-15 and flankers are exceptional at doing this. Um, so let's see what happens now. AIM-120 has got a good lock on him. That's it's going to struggle to beat that missile. I, on the other hand, have done something different. Rather than just running away, the absolute um, what I call the pinnacle of this F-15 combat is. As you're coming down in the split S, um, there's no way of knowing whether the hostile's dead or not. You you just won't know. Uh, so always assume the hostile's not dead until I see a smoking plane. So what I've done is I turned it into a 180 degree twist. So I've done the vertical um, split S with no roll. Then I've added uh, 90 degrees of roll. And so as well as doing my split S and keeping my energy extremely high, I'm also turning in to the back into the combat zone so also I'm adding these extra angles it's scrubbing more of the hostile missile speed look at this being scrubbed off uh, for a missile these are extremely slow speed uh, so and they'll be very surprised if they can hit me it looks like Fortuna is going to get hit and Kapow he has uh, what would have happened well I'd scrubbed the ER and I'd also scrubbed the ET with this corkscrew move um, if he hadn't survived uh, sorry if he had have survived, you can see how quickly I've turned around and got on a combat vector. He would still be dodging the AMRAM, um, and yet I'm here, I'll have my radar on now, and I'm ready to fire again at whatever that is, 8 miles or something like that. So, I was just running that through again, reviewing that um, split, ash, split S turning into a corkscrew 180 um, as the um, optimum use of for an F-15 in this type of engagement. You can see, obviously, I've had to lose a lot of altitude. That'll always happen in any engagement. As soon as any missile's fired, you beat it by going low to increase your energy and decrease the missile's energy. Right, let's check out the next fight. Stand by. Cap, gate. Bags off. Select AMRAM. Nose warm. Lock target. Silent lock, crank right. Cap spike, 11 o'clock, 20 miles. Cap, 14 miles, turning in. Cap, box 3 and evasive. Good show, good show. Uh, was that a? Um... Oh, I hit you with the AD. Oh uh, yeah, must have. Okay, fight three is on. We're just gonna do exactly the same thing. It's rinse and repeat. There's no, never any change. You always have exactly the same. So bags off, gate power, radar on, lock the target. Always silent lock. Crank to the left or the right. In this case, it doesn't matter. We're going right, 40 degrees. 
to the right, 32 miles away. Um, you can see he's got a little bit extra speed. I don't know how he managed that this time, but I should catch up because I do have a superior aircraft in straight line speed. You can see I'm starting to catch him up now in speed, which, as we discussed earlier, is absolutely critical, and it's what you want to be aimed for. We've now caught him up to speed. We're now surpassing him. Uh, I'm cranking to the right. Hostile is cranking to the left, so it's this awkward situation where we're cranking away from each other. Um, if this could go in indefinitely because we would both end up just cranking round each other in circles which happens when um, we choose to crank in the same direction um, so 20 miles or so hostile has decided to turn in at this point um, so he's 20 miles he's probably spiking me now I'm making smaller movements just to keep him at the edge of the crank window I'm going faster than him now really using the F-15 now it's power Hostile is 16 miles away, so I'm going to turn in very shortly. 15 miles away, 14 miles away. You'll see my aircraft bank now and turn in. In we turn for the shot. Uh, Fortinero is waiting a bit, so Fortinero has waited to 12 miles this time. That's just he's just trying to fool me basically using different, you know. So I don't know when it's coming. The missile is now out. I'm gonna. I've rolled upside down like I do. I've fired my missile. I fired slightly earlier. A mile early. I'm a bit crap at the moment so I'm a mile early that probably will make the difference there's a good chance I'll miss him here because I fired a mile early um, let's see what Fortinero's done he's launched an ER so radar guided missile and he's done his usual trick of firing a killer missile behind it which is very annoying I've done my spit S so I've got my chaff out I've got my energy high no energy low at the moment actually that doesn't sound right for some reason the speeds aren't working on this particular run through um, it says 240 knots I'm not at 240 knots I can, I'm actually at 680 knots so just ignore the speed I've obviously done something stupid there the height's still working um, right so let's uh, continue that through you can see I've done my split S I've put my chaff out and now I'm going into the corkscrew right still energy high and um, his missiles are still after me, but I look good to beat them. Hostile is possibly going to beat this aim. 120 has just run out of too energy to, uh, too early. Extremely close there. Almost hit him, but I think he dodges it. Yep, it's just scrubbed enough energy for a look. And annoyingly, I thought at this point, um, I'd cork through, I got my radar on, and you can see I'm now in an excellent position for the kill. The hostile, the hostile is, although he's fast, he is um, in a bad combat position. He's heading down, he's heading slightly away, he's not aware of where I am at all. Whereas I've got my radar on, I'm hot on him, and I'm good to kill him. Um, and that was the beauty of the, the moves that we saw there, and the, the, the distances. I'm now in a kill position, he's in a defensive position, which is where you want to be. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't see that stupid kill missile, so I died. Nine times out of ten, that kill missile won't be there, and it, so I would now be on the offensive, and I'll be pumping missiles out. So that's another good use, um, another good example of uh, how to how to accurately use that uh, method in combat. We'll just do one more with a slight variation. Stand by. Cap. Gate. Cap. Ags off. Cap, silent lock target, crank right. Cap, spike, 11 o'clock. Fourteen miles, turning in for shot. Cap Fox three and evasive.
Boy! They were down there. Oh. Well done. Okay, off we go in our last fight. Um, exactly the same to begin with. Bags off, gate power, crank left or right, silent lock. And watch the distance between them. We're going to have a slight variation at the end. So rather than split S and corkscrewing back into the hostile, we can go split S into a um, controlled defensive. Uh, maybe we'll go through that when we get there. So let's just watch it through. It's just going to be all the usual stuff until we get to the get to the end speeds appear to be working again so Fort Nero had a huge advantage of speed for some reason not sure why he may have started earlier or something I don't know but we'll see the Pratt & Whitney's um, doing their thing in this F-15 now as we start to catch up we should be about equal speed or should, I should have uh, overtaken him by the time we're in actual combat 20 miles, uh, hostile is flanking to the right, cab is also flanking to the right, hostile is now turning in at 20 miles. Cap's uh, now faster, which is good, that's where we want to be. 17 miles, I'm just uh, making some small moves here to keep him in the crank window, at the edge of the radar window. If he goes out of the radar window, you fucked it completely. You'll lose him off uh, track and you'll be shot down. So, Cap's turning in now at the pre designated 13 14 miles. I'm going to invert now and I'm going to fire now. Bang! Perfect. Look at that. 10.2 miles. That's the kind of accuracy you want um, to get these shots to work properly. Um, hostile has done his annoying trick of flying an ER and a secret killer missile. So, Hostile will then. He's already gone defensive. This is interesting. I didn't notice this before. That missile has not gone pit bull yet. It won't go pit bull until it gets to about here. So Fort Nero doesn't actually know that I fired this, but from experience, he knows that I'm going to fire at 10 miles. Uh, so he's already started his uh, manoeuvring, which gives an extremely good chance of um, beating my missile. In reality, this hostile won't know that you fired um, until the missile, until it's basically too late. So in reality, he won't really get the option of doing this, but it'll make it more interesting, so we'll carry on. So that missile is going to go down and do its thing. I've done gone into split S. I'm chaff out. I'm not going to corkscrew this time because I don't want to go to uh, offensive immediately. This time we're going to try the um, controlled defensive. So what we've done is uh, the hostile is busy dodging my missile. Um, I know his speed is fast, but his vector is bad. He's not heading towards me. He's heading down to the ground. He's dodging left and right, trying to dodge this missile, which he does, I believe. Meanwhile, Caps comes straight down, gathering energy all the time and going on to straight level vector, cold from the hostile. And it's going to give me, uh, my because my plane is designed to do this, it's going to give me huge speed, as we'll see in a minute. So you look at uh, Fortinero, he's burnt off a lot of uh, straight line vector as you can see here to do all this wiggling. Our cap's going straight. So now our planes start to come into their own. So the F-15's topping out there at 7.30 true speed. Fortinero in a flanker can't catch up with that. The flanker has slightly more power I think, but it's much more drag. It's a much more turn fighter style design. It can so never keep up in a straight line at any altitude as far as I'm aware. So you can see if we pause it there, I'm at uh, 750 knots true. He's down at 720 knots true, so all this time I'm getting away. Um, I'm putting distance between me and the flanker, which is what you want to do in F-15. An F-15 always wants the distance, a flanker always wants to be close. Those are the difference in the, um, in the design. So we're we increasing, we're going to get up to 10 miles again. I've got no way of knowing, he's not stupid enough to have his radar on, so I've got no way of knowing where that fighter is. I can't see it because it's at the 10 mile mark. I just have to purely guess by experience. I'm at 770 knots, so I know I'm absolutely trundling away. I can't do this against an F-15, obviously, because an F-15 can go just as fast as me. can do it against a flanker. So I'm still blasting away. Now I've decided we've been going away from long enough. In reality, if I wasn't doing a video, I would have gone probably about twice as long as that. Um, but uh, it should be enough to get the win anyway. So I know roughly, although I don't know, I can't see him, I've got no radar markers. I know roughly where he is from experience. I know he's going to be roughly opposite to this vector, so I'm going to dive down, hopefully to the uh, right, and back into him. 
He's going to keep his energy up. I'm going to have to scrub my energy off to turn fast. I've got to get down to less than 600 knots. And we've done that pretty well. That's a good turn. If you look at our G, where are we? 5.8. So I really should have been maintaining 9G there to get a maximum G turn. Um, so that was a bit lazy. Again, out of practice. Um, we're And there at the end of the turn, we're turned in. We were starting the fight again from 7 miles. I should win this at this point. I should have my radar on. Um, he's hot to me. I should be able to pick him up straight away. Uh, from experience, I know who would be down low, so I'll get my radar cone, I'll aim it down, and I'll pick him up straight away, get, get another Fox 3 off, and that's a definite win. In reality, what happens is I'm struggling. I've got my vector wrong. I'm aiming above him. I should be aiming down slightly. Uh, I should have my radar cone already set down here and scanning. I'm not because I've done it all wrong, basically. But this should be an F-15 um, victory, and I should have fired my missile by now. And at this point, it's too late. I've lost situational awareness. I can't find him. I'm panicking. And he's going to get the kill. And kaboomy. So, in this example, 1401, because he's just a better pilot, and I'm out of practice. In reality, the tactics were good. The tactics were clean. I sh if I was doing my job right... At the end of the turn, I would have picked him up. Uh, I would have uh, got a Fox 3 out there. As soon as it went put ball, I would have turned around at low altitude and got out. And that would have been another win for the F-15 if the pilots were equal. Uh, so that's the end. That's all the examples I'd like to show. Um, again, these are relevant to stipulations that we said at the beginning. So bear that in mind. You don't want to be doing this at sea level. You don't want to be doing this at Angels 50. You don't want to be doing this necessarily in a terrain fight. Uh, or a multi a multi aircraft fight or a SAM fight or whatever, but this is a good one on one fight. A lot of a lot of people tell me, uh, well, we never get one on one fights. In reality, there's always lots of people in public service, which is where you do most of your fighting. That's kind of true, but it's also kind of BS. So when I was taught, I was always taught um, to go on the public service to find the big batches of enemies and then to stalk that batch of enemies at 60 miles um, and then wait patiently um, like a lion stalking a pack of zebras you wait for one of them to straight off on his own um, which makes him weak then only then do you turn in and actually do an engagement which turns it into this a one-on-one -on -one fight which is exactly what you want because in the F-15 pilot skill being fair you will always win basically with the tactics we've shown um, okay so I hope that was um, useful. I've tried to include everything. It's really difficult when it's unscripted to try and remember everything. So I've been remembering stuff as I've going, gone along. If you'd like to add any feedback, suggestions, etc, let me know. But I think that's pretty comprehensive. And thank you for watching.